All right, welcome back to the Roblox course. And in this lecture, we're going to take a look at GUIs. So GUI stands for a graphical user interface. And it's basically the interface that you see displayed where you can click buttons or you have text displayed on your, you know, device, on your screen, basically. Now, there are three types of GUIs that are available in Roblox. There is the screen GUI, there is the billboard GUI, and then there is the service GUI. Now, in this first lecture, we're going to take a look at the, um, the screen GUI, and then we have two more lectures where we take a look at the billboard GUI and the service GUI. However, if you can manage one, so if you know about one GUI, you actually know about all three of them. Uh, they are very similar. Right, so to start with this, we're going to go to starter GUI here, and uh, as you can see, it actually already is in GUI mode up here, and uh, but we're going to use the explorer here. We're going to uh, press the plus and we're going to make a new screen GUI. Now, if we go to the screen GUI, we can, first of all, we're not going to see anything right now. But if we then make a, go to the plus again, we can actually insert a frame or, or a text button or some other things. We're going to use a frame for now. As you can see, something appears in the top left corner. Now we can actually click, click and drag this. So this is the great thing and why it's so unbelievably powerful. Uh, the GUI is very easy to modify and actually create. So it's very easy to create good looking GUIs and also just to test out GUIs in general. So that's that's really uh, well done in Roblox Studio. Now what we can do is we can right resize it here. Now if we hold shift and sorry if we hold no. So this sometimes happens right. So um, now I'm back in the normal mode here right. So there's normal select mode. And it's important if you want to go back to then modifying the GUI, you actually have to go back here into frame, for example, and then we can move it around or you can just click in screen GUI. And then we can continue modifying this. So as you can see, sometimes you can't really uh, do that. So then we select frame again, and then we can just modify it again. So if we hold shift and uh, move it, then it's going to stay in its uh, ratio. So the ratio is going to stay the same, right? And then when we use it, as you can see, there are also some help bar lines. So we can actually center it into the well center of the frame. So let's just say we want something like this and we want it centered in both directions. So something like that. So now it's actually in the center of this, you know, the GUI. Now we can add stuff to this frame. So as you can see, there is also a scrolling frame. This simply means that there is a bar and that you can scroll with the mouse wheel. When over it, there is a text label, a text button, a text box. So the text label is just a basically something that where the text is written that you cannot change. A text button is just a button with text. So we're going to add this. As you can see right now, it's added here at the same position as frame. So as a child of the screen GUI, but actually let's make it a child of the frame. And as you can see, then it moves into the frame immediately. And then we can basically put it here, for example, have a button down there. Now we're going to take a look at the properties um, very soon, but let's just, um, you know, create a a simple GUI and then we're going to see what the properties hold for us. So let's also add a label. So instead of uh, doing it up here, I do um, think that this makes more sense. So for example, text label, and then it actually adds that to the frame immediately. So let's put this label, you know, sort of here. And let's just let it be called label for now. That's fine. And images are a little bit more complicated. So for us to use our own images we actually have to publish the game first but we're not going to worry about that right now rest assured that the images are actually not as hard to use as one might think but there are some other things that are important so let's uh, for example say that well actually you know this size window is that is that normal well i mean maybe but no one really plays like that most of the people probably play in full screen right so if we actually scale this, as it, or we make it smaller, as you can see, this stays sort of the same, right? So the, so the size here stays sort of the same. If we do this, you know, it sort of stays the same as well. So that's kind of good, right? If we go into, we can, with this little button here, we can actually change to the view that we would have with this GUI in mobile mode. It's okay, it's right. It's not, it's not the worst thing, but it's also not the best thing. And what we can do is, and now we actually go into the properties, and this is one of the most important properties in GUIs. If you take nothing else from this video except for this fact, you know, I've done my work, basically. 
uh, because the GYs, there is uh, one important thing that we need to look at, and that is going to be size. And there are two ways that size works. So there is a scale and an offset. Now the offset is the size in pixels. So currently this, uh, the frame here, is 455 pixels in this direction and 256 pixels in this direction. So this is the size of, the, of this frame. Now that's okay. However, the, this means that the frame doesn't scale. So as you have seen, the frame stays the same size whatever my um, size of the window is, right? So that you might say, well, that's basically what I want. But I'm telling you, this is definitely not what you want because if we now scale it a little bit bigger, and this wouldn't be an insanely big, um, let's say, GUI for uh, the PC, right? So if you have this, it's like, okay, it's, it's above most of the screen, but it's not insanely big. Well, if we now switch to mobile, as you can see, that's, this is just not working, right? So this takes up, I mean, almost 100% of the frame. So that really doesn't work. And this is because the scale here is set in offset. Once again, now we've scaled it up. So now it's actually 723 in the X direction and 355, uh, you know, size in pixel size in the Y direction. And what we want to use is we want to use scale because then it actually scales in percentages with the screen size. So let's first, first of all, set the offset to zero and then it's going to be, you know, zero and zero. And then the scale is basically percentages. So zero is 0% and one is 100%. So if we set it to one and one here, then it would basically take up the entire screen. Now there's a, uh, this doesn't, it's not set in the middle right now. So there you go. So now it actually takes up the entirety of the screen here. Now that's of course not what we want. We want maybe something like, I don't know, maybe 55% um, in the X direction. Sorry, it's 0.55, there you go. And then maybe something like point, I don't know, two five. Well, a little bit more. Let's say let's say point three five. Yeah, that that's okay, right? And then we can move it around. And now what happens if we actually scale this? As you can see, it actually scales with the size of the screen. Now we actually need to do exactly the same thing for the children here. And we can do this by also using scale. So for example, instead of 200, we're going to say something like 0.2. That's maybe a little much, maybe 0.1, that's fine. And then zero on the offset. Oh, yeah. uh, so let's actually do, do 0.2, that's 0.2 is fine. And then we're going to do scale here as well, and that's going to be 0.35 maybe. And then of course, let's, now yeah, it actually is also 0.25. Yeah, that's actually okay, that's fine. So now the button is actually kind of nice, and then the label of course needs the same treatment as well. So let's do 0, 0 first, and then let's do 2.5 and 2 point, uh, 0.25. And then we can also center it again, something like this, and something like this. And now, when we resize this, as you can see, everything sizes it with it properly. And if we look at it inside of the mobile view, it looks great, right? Instead of having this thing be giant, we actually have it in a relative size to the screen. And this is basically the most important thing that you need to take away with. You must always use scale for the size, otherwise, well, it's just gonna, it's just, it's just a bad idea to use the, the, um, not the scale, but the offset and determine the size of each of the GUI elements in pixels. It's not a good idea. You know, people have varying different uh, screen sizes and so, yeah, it, it is very, is a very good idea to use this because that's, that's going to save a lot of headache in the future. Right, but let's take a look at a few other properties here of, for example, the text label right now. So one of the important things is, of course, down here in under text. So we can choose a font, right? So we can, for example, say, I don't know, something like Legacy or, um, you know, Oswald, I don't know. Well, maybe... Roboto, Roboto is pretty good. Uh, we can have a line height. So if we do three, then it's a little bit higher up. Or we can just say, uh, keep it at one. And then we can also make it do rich text. If you don't know what that means, it's not an important. Um, basically just means that you can sort of set the, 
the formatting a little bit differently. And then here we have the text variable or the text property, and this is what is written as a label. So, so for example, we could say hello player, um, please enter your enter your name, right? And then if we send that. Then, as you can see, now the label actually has that in there. And what's also important as a quick uh, thing, uh, we've changed the size, of course. And if we now resize this, it's not going to use the pixels again, but it's actually going to resize it based on the percentages. So this all works perfectly well. Now, sometimes, as you can see, in this case, the text actually overflows uh, over the label. We can change this by saying text scaled. And now the text actually scales with the with the size of the label as well. So that's that's amazing that this all works basically out of box, right? We don't have to do any scripting for that whatsoever. It's really nice. We can actually say also say the alignment, whether or not it should be centered or you know left aligned or right aligned uh, right here. And yeah. And then, well, that's actually, let's keep it centered. Yeah, that's good. Right. We also can add a stroke. So the stroke color right now, of course, doesn't make sense because the text is um, black. So maybe let's say we make the text something like, you know, this dark blue. And then the stroke, we can make this uh, red. So we just, just for, uh, you know, demonstration purposes. And then we can say the text stroke transparency is zero. And then, of course, we're going to get sort of a an outline for the text. Now, this, of course, doesn't look very good just for demonstration purposes only in this moment in time. And well, let's take a look at the properties for the button. The properties for the button have a similar text property because, of course, this is a text button. So we can actually have a text in here as well. So let's just say send, right? And then it turns to send. We can also say here text scaled. I would also agree that that makes sense in this case. And then there is not really a whole lot more for the button in the properties. However, what we can do, and we're going to do this um, pretty soon, we're just going to resize this a little bit. We're going to add another thing to the frame here. And this is going to be a text box. Now, a text box is basically a way for the user to enter text. So when a player joins your game and they're going to see this GUI, then they can actually enter something in here. And as you can see, I've actually written, right, hello player, please enter your name. So this is going to be the text box. We're actually going to look into what's written in there when the player hits send. And then we're going to output this into the console. Now, for that to work, we actually want to create a new script under the button. And as you can see, it actually already says local script. Now, this is, of course, something that needs to be a local script because not right now we're inside of the GUI. So we want to use a local script and we just um, added this uh, under the button. And so we're just going to say, you know, example button script. This is going to be our example button script. And we need a few things. And so the first thing we want is the button itself. And we can actually get this by using script.parent. So the script simply refers to itself. So in this case, script would be our local script. And then the parent of that is, of course, the button. So this would yield the button. And if we then say local uh, screen, because we also want the screen GUI, then what we can do is we can say button.parent.parent. And why is that the case? Well, because the parent of the button is the frame, and the parent of the frame is the screen GUI. And we want, in this case, the screen GUI so, um, yeah, that's the two things that we need. And we want to use a connect. So we want to connect to a an event again. And the uh, event is uh, button.activated. As you can see, that's an event. And we just connect this with a, let's let's call this function on button activa activated. There you go. And we'll, let's create this as a local function on button activated. And inside of here, we're just going to first of all print out a button clicked, right? And then we're going to say screen dot enabled, uh, enabled, there you go, equals false. So this simply turns off the, the screen GUI here. So, I mean, let's just, let's just try this and see uh, what happens if we now actually start the game. So when we start the game now, what's going to happen is that we're going to see this 
a GUI here and we can hit send and then it's gonna disappear and we're gonna print out a button clicked. So let's try this. And of course it did work, so button clicked and the GUI disappeared. So this is what happens. Oops, that's not what I wanted. So this is basically what happens here when we print button click, right? That that makes sense. And then screen GUI, uh, GUI or screen enabled equals to false simply turns off the screen. And now what we also want is we want to print out, you know, hello player or hello and then the name that you put into this, uh, the box here, right? So the name that we put into this box, we actually want to print out. And we can do that by saying, well, local text. And then we say, well, screen. We know that we can get the screen by using this screen variable. And then if we move down here, we can go to the frame. So we can say frame. And then we can go to text box, text box. And as we have seen, or we can see, we can just uh, select the text box, look into the properties and see, well, what, what would this be called? Well, it actually is also called dot text because it's empty right now. And so we can say, well, okay, dot text. And then we can simply say print, hello, uh, let's say hello, and then just text. Right, so let's just try this. So let's save this and try whether or not this works. Uh, so what we would expect right now is we want it to print out button clicked, then the screen should, you know, disappear. And then it's also going to say hello, and then whatever I put into this box. So let's just uh, start it. And let's say, for example, I click into this box and then here, as you can see, I can write in. So I'm just going to say, hello. So I'm going to say Calton Joe. And if we send it, we would expect, first of all, button clicked and then also hello Calton Joe. Let's see. And of course, it worked perfectly. So first button clicked was called or, you know, executed and printed out. And then hello Calton Joe was also printed out. So that's actually how easy it can be to go in and, you know, play around with the GUIs. I really... Uh, say this, um, I would definitely advise to go in and just uh, play around with the GUIs for a little while and just, uh, you know, tamper with it a little bit, look at, look at what you can do. So, um, yeah, the most important thing, however, that I have to say is really the size. I cannot, re I cannot uh, emphasize this enough, really, because the size is the, so important that you always put it to, uh, to scale instead of offset. And if this is, like I said, the only thing that you take away with uh, this GUI lecture, I I'm happy because the the size, the resizability in its, um, you know, when, when you do it on automatically, it's amazing. And this is one of the hardest problems, you know, in game development, let's say in general, to make sure that every screen size is accounted for and that Roblox just does it out of the board so that Roblox Studios just, just works with it amazing so this is uh, this is actually basically a, an amazing feature a great feature and i really advise you to always use this and never to use the the pixels um the pixel size yeah yeah so that's um that's basically it for the screen gy um it was a little longer as a lecture but i think that it's important that you actually you know get to know every bit of the gy uh, functionality and yeah, so that was it for the screen GUI. I hope that it was uh, informative for you. And if there are any questions, of course, always feel free to ask and I'll be sure to respond. And yeah.